Hi, FlossTube. It's Barbara, the Raspberry Stitcher. I'm back for episode number 11. How are y'all doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's been a couple of weeks, so I thought I better get FlossTube in. Plus, I still have my special edition Jesse Watson FlossTube. I'll be um, recording today and hopefully uploading both of them. We'll see how it goes. If not, it'll be in the next few days. So check that out. I am going to give my progress on Jesse and talk a little bit about autism and um, I think friendships and outside sources of finding um, activities and friends for your child. So check that out. First, I would like to give a slight update. Um, I have been working in my garden. I ended up straining my right leg. I have a couple of strains and um, I've been kind of not able to do as much things as I want to do. So uh, the gardening, a little bit of tour that I want to give you guys will be coming up. I still haven't totally finished due to that. I've been kind of laid up, not been able to um, walk as well. So I kind of probably overdid it. Oh, well, it's worth it in the end. Um, it'll be better soon. And then also we did find a vehicle. So I got a new to me RAV4 2018, which I'm very excited about. It has um, low mileage and I think we got a decent price. Um, I will say it's very hard to find ve vehicles and cars out there, um, especially if you have some things in mind that you want. If you're pretty open-ended, maybe you have a better chance, but um, it's definitely getting tight out there. Uh, things are hard to find if you're looking for specifics and um, I kind of was a little bit. So anyway, that's that. Um, so to keep this short, and it won't be too short. I apologize in the beginning. I'm going to move on. Um, so I am want to wrap up May. Uh, just kind of talk about, I know we guys, I said I have some stitchy issues up in the beginning of May. I did really good for about a week and a half. And then these last few weeks after my last floss tube, I just kind of got, I think, a little burnout on such big projects and not seeing completed projects. So I decided that um, I kind of just wanted to get some things finished. So I really, really focused on my finishing of some of the items at the beginning of the year. And I can show you what that looks like. So in my calendar, I kind of made a whole whip list and um, all of them got different symbols. So we kind of like this little hashtag little thing here were things that I wanted to finish quickly. So I have a couple on this page. And then I have multiples on this page. So everything I gave kind of like this little index. And my index basically was um, finish first. So things that I knew that I could get finished, you know, with a couple of days of stitching, maybe a week, maybe a month, but I could get them finished this year. Um, then if I got those finished and there were 10, and I'm happy to say I have 10 total finishes so far. So I'm very excited. Um, then I kind of did this little circle on what was up next to finish. So we're gonna talk about that and where I'm going from there. And then I had a plus sign on things I want in monthly progress. So things that I'm gonna work on every month. And that's what you guys have been seeing in my whip rotation, um, in my rotation that I've been trying to do monthly. And I've been doing really good at it. I'm at, we're getting close to halfway through the year and I'm kind of like stalling a little bit. So I needed to give myself a little extra oomph to um, just see some things finished and you know, um, my next goal, I think this next month will be um, actually getting them fully finished, get some FFOs on them. Then my other one was yearly progress. So these are long-term whips that I knew there was no way I'm gonna finish. I just wanna make some decent progress on them. I needed to bring them into the rotation, but knew I couldn't do it every month. So I, that's what you're seeing with um, the ones that I bring in once a month. Um, so this past month, and I will show you the update on that one because I'm, I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to put it away or keep going with it for one more month because I don't have 12 whips to do that monthly rotation. So there's a couple of them I could add, keep going on for a little bit. But that is the, um, uh, oh, um, Teresa project. So we'll go into that later. Sorry, a little brain freeze there. So that's how I categorized all of my whips. I know people do it in different ways, sizes. I mean, there's so many different ways to do it, but these are the things that I wanted to do. So I was close to a finish last time. And here is the finished product for the Stacey Nash um, House on Pumpkin Pumpkin Hill Pin Keep. So I used all the um, 
But for flosses, except I substituted roasted marshmallow for the white pumpkins, but everything else is called for. And here is the total finish. I know it was so close last time, but now it is all finished. There are only, I think, what, four? Four colors in this. So it's super um, not inexpensive. It's smaller. I did mine on a 36 gunmetal by Weeks Dye Works. This is the probably old dye lot. I don't know if they even do this on these Weigart base. They may only do it on this base. Um, but I really, really like it. So my plan is to take this fabric. I think I might, I'm still trying to decide, I might grunge it up just a little bit. I might like take the piece, cut it out, maybe tea, tea uh, coffee dye it a little bit, just kind of grunge it. And that's going to be the backing. I have not decided on an actual uh, trim or if I'm going to do a trim or not, but that one is finished. So my next project that was up for in my, I think my last one of the 10 was um, Give Thanks by Blackbird Designs. And I did this on a 30 count, not what was called for, Old Java Mill was called for by R&R. &R, and um, I ended up doing it on a 30 count uh, week style works in the colorway linen. So it is on linen and it's called linen. Um, I followed kind of the colors that were on here. I did most of the called for. I did add in and change a few things. The um, reds, I used cranberry. I did stick with the gray barber for the purple. And then I have a limited edition um, general arts that I got from Stitchy Box called um, Queen's Rubies. I think I've used that on another one too. Um, most of the colors I did use, I did use another limited edition called Sampler Crown, um, which was a brown for the basket. Uh, and I was trying to think if I used anything else that was different. I think everything else, oh, the orange I did Sweet Potato by Weeks Dye Works. I think they had, which is a pretty comparable sub, they used Pumpkin Pie by General Arts, and I don't think I had that. I think I like that color better. Um, otherwise, I think I used, I did use a peanut brittle and it was a crescent color. Um, I added that in, but um, anyway, I, these are, they're a little messed up now that I was looking at them. This is kind of the color palette. It's really pretty, um, definitely my kind of colors. And I'll put this up against something because you'll definitely see through it. Here is my finish. I really, really like it. I need to measure it. I think it fits a nine inch round. Maybe, maybe it's a six inch. Let me see what it finishes as. Oh, you know what? It's about a six inch round. Yeah, six inch round sewing box. I think I have one. So I think I'm gonna see if I can finish it on that. I really like how it turned out. Very fall-like, very harvest. <laughs> it's cute. I really like it. I did do this two over two, which is not my favorite, but I stuck it out and got her got it done. Um, it has some pretty um, eyelets, some of the bigger eyelets. These, there's one up here. I ended up, it only called to do so many legs. I added in a few extra legs on the eyelets to kind of make them stand out a little bit more and be a little fuller. But um, yeah, I think it turned out really, really adorable. I like it. So those are my two finishes. Yes, I have two finishes. I'm so excited. Um, and I kind of wanted to show you, like I basically had kitted up and I have it kitted up for multiple different um, holidays. So I had this in a Lila May bag. I've gotten a few of these. I've been very lucky. But in here, I'm just going to kind of show, I've got a few other things kitted up. So a lot of this is all like more Halloween-ish. So I've got Blackbirds, um, the Tis the Season, wait, Tis, oh, Tis halloween -y. So I've got that. I've got some fabric kitted up and some things in there to do a couple of those. I've got another Stacey Nash Hello with Pumpkins in here. I've got 
got um, uh, Hello from Liz Matthews, the All Hallows Eve. It's so the Quaker pumpkins. I love this. So I've got that kitted up with some fabric that I want to use. I have another, um, a Barbara Anna design that I think is adorable. And I'm going to do it on a darker color. So I'm actually going to change it up quite a bit and pulled some different flosses for that. That's one I really like to do this year. I really like that one. So I have that one. And then I also have one that's a little more fall-like that I have kitted up. So I actually took when I decided I was going to finish those whips, I took them out of the one and just put them all together, but I've now sorted them back together. So I have like, you know, some charts in here that are all fall. I have the Give Thanks, the Hoopla, and I have it kitted with some different things. I haven't decided. Um, I have um, Autumn Hill. I have that kitted up in here. Um, I have another Barbara Anna in here. Um, with some Lakeside Linen. I don't have the flosses yet. And then, and the nice thing is, is most of the colors of the flosses are all going to be similar to what's in some of the other charts. So if I need to sub, I can. It makes it super easy. I also have this freebie if you go on to Beth Twist Heartstring Sampler. She had this freebie, and so I've got it kitted up to go. Um, so that's kind of some things I do, especially for the seasonal projects. Um, I have um, another couple I'm going to show you later, but I really enjoy having those bigger bags and um, just putting things in there. And like I said, a lot of the colors since you're doing that season are going to be similar for other projects. So then it's like you can just move some of those threads or whatever into that next project, which is great. Um, so that's going to lead me on to, so I have those two finishes. That finished out the 10 items that I wanted to finish in my book here. So I have all of these done. So now I'm going to go to these circles. One of them that I was really excited, um, somebody had just finished one of them on Instagram and I saw it and I was like, you know what? I really want to get back to those. So I picked up um, Plum Street's Searable Collection. This is number five. And I had just had um, the top border done, was starting to complete the bottom border, and I had the basic tree done with the, the red berries or whatever they are. I did not really have much of the leaves done. but um, And I bought this actually as a kit from Craft Gallery. They had some kits of these. So I'm using all the called for threads. It even came with the chenille to finish it which was nice. So, and I am doing this on a 36 count. And I'm going to forget the name now. It's Regency by Picture This Plus. So this is how far I've gotten. I ended up, um, I just had to fill in all of these little scallops. So I filled those in. I came up here, I put all the leaves in, and then I worked on these two beautiful deer. So I really like it. This is really a green color. It's similar to Legacy, but it's a lot more green, a lot more green. So I don't know that the green is really showing up um, here, but I'm thinking that I've actually pulled some backing. I think I'm going to back it with this. If I have enough, I think it'll be really nice. Um, so all that I have left to do is to um, really work on these words in these little bit here. So that shouldn't take too long. I'm really kind of excited about it. Um, and I think that color backing will be beautiful. But I also want to show you, I decided I wanted to do this whole series. So I thought I would show you some of my finishes of it and um, what I have planned for them. So one of the first ones I actually did was Cerebral, um, this is four, number four. I just love all the sayings on these. Um, this one is, be you as to others kind and true as you would have them be to you. Um, I think one of the first places I saw this was Pam and Steph. I think Steph was doing this one and it was just adorable. So um, this is again, 36 count. All these are on the Regency. I decided to do them in all the same back fabric color. And um, I will say this one and another one I did, they have mistakes. I don't really, you can tell, but it looks pretty. <laughs> 
and it worked out. I made it work. And then I believe I'm going to use this fabric to go with it. So I think that'll be, can you see that? I think it'll be really, really cute. This backing fabric will be perfect. I am excited. Just adorable. So I have that one out and I'm doing that. All of these were one over one on 36. I like one over one on 36. So um, another one I did is I believe this one is number one. I decided I did not want to put the ABC up here. I haven't decided if I'm going to put anything up there, to be honest. Right now, it's just empty and I'm fine. I've seen some other people that didn't put that up there either. So um, again, this is on 36 count Regency. I think it's adorable. The colors are, I love the colors. So I have pulled a couple of fabrics. I'm not sure which one I'll use. I'm kind of leaning towards the less busy. Um, so I have this one, has some blue in there. And then I have this one, which I think is the one I'm kind of leaning towards right now. I think that is gonna be really nice on the back of that. Again, no idea for trims. I'll wait until I get done. And then I also have done number two. So this one. This one I messed up on too. It has mistakes and I just went with it. <laughs> so here it is. Again, it's on 36 count Regency. And all of these I'm pretty sure are pretty much all the called for colors that are in it. So I just changed the fabric color. One over two. One thread over two linens, threads. I like this one too. Ever faithful, ever kind, firm and generous, be thy mind. I think that's adorable. So I have, I haven't decided. I This one is a little patriotic to me. So I thought I could put this on the back. It's a little busy. Uh, then I just went to kind of something more basic. That one. And then I kind of pulled this one out. And right now I'm kind of thinking I might do that one. It's just kind of fun and different. So we'll see. Um, so that leaves one left to actually stitch. I've had all of these in the same project bag. I do that with some of the collections. I like to put them all in one project bag. I've done that with some of the series for Blackbird too. So this is lesson three. I think it's adorable. All the bees. I haven't really done many bees, which is surprising because, you know, a lot of people do, but I have not. So I have, I believe, all of the thread colors already in there. Um, I really do like the thread colors. I think from the picture, I, um, I think I'm going to like this a lot more than I even thought I would. There's a lot more purple and stuff. I have the fabric for the Regency cut. So I think those will be really nice, those little purples and greens and rounds it'll be good and i've actually got this wonderful backing fabric that i think will be perfect um i got it just recently and it's all of these different bees and things i think some of this would be really great as backing fabric for that so that is my plan anyway. Obviously it's not stitched and once it gets stitched, we'll have to see, but I, a lot of those colors are in there. So I think it'll look really, really nice. So, um, yeah, I really want to start this after the next one. I know I shouldn't, but I really want to. So we're gonna have to see what happens. I don't know. Anyway, I thought I would show you those. Those are fun, they're cute. Um, I think they're gonna be great. I'm doing them all as pillows, um, similar to the, what they're shown, obviously. So I'm excited. I'm excited to have a few finishes. Um, I do bog myself down with large projects and I need to remember I've got to add in some of these smaller ones to kind of like give yourself that fun refresh, like, okay, I've got, I've completed something, not just a row here and a row there and a motif here. Like that's great. And, and it's nice to see that progress, but sometimes after a while you just think, is this ever going to get finished? And then you kind of like look at yourself and go, why do you do these large projects? Why are you drawn to these large stitches? And I don't know, I just am. Anyway. Um, we're going to move on from that and talk about 
move these back over here, uh, some, some stash. So because we had to buy a vehicle, um, little fact here, I've been married, it'll be 24 years in October, and we have, if ever, maybe one year, we had a car payment. We have never had a car payment. We've been very lucky to be able to um, buy cars from family or friends, or, you know, I've had, we've had um, some just good luck with cars and being able to keep them for a long period of time. Um, so this is a whole new venture. We are going to have a car payment. And I know for some people are like, that's no big deal, whatever. And I'm like, for us, it is a big deal. This is a different and, and bigger change to our, our pocketbook. So I'm going to try to be more mindful of what I'm spending. Um, I'm kind of putting a slight freeze on things as far as if I have something that'll work, I'm going to use that to start things if, when I do start things um, and try not to just keep buying because I love, love, love the other side of cross stitch, which is, you know, having a stash. <laughs> so um, I probably will have to buy threads here and there or um, a piece for finishing here and there. But other than that, I'm going to try to curb all of that. That being said, some of this stuff was from before um, that came in. So I want to show you a few things. One thing I forgot to show you, um, I think, and I, I think I showed you the chart for, um, for Brenda Gervais, happy birthday. I think it's adorable. I had to have it as soon as I saw it. Um, you know, it comes with that. I also got the um, the box and all the finishing accoutrements in there. So um, I wanted to show you that. Um, next, this week I got my Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. So I really like this. Um, the only thing I would say, and I know it's done to look very um, kind of Americana, um, but I would probably change some of the colors a little bit. And I might fill in the basket a little bit with some specialty stitches. Like I have some ideas to kind of zhuzh it up a little, but I really like it. Um, at church, we say this all the time. It is in, if you're Catholic, you know. Um, so I really like that. Um, the other thing I want to show you, I do like all of um, the Blue Flowers Little Heart series. So I wanted to show that with the little kitty. It's adorable. I love the flower motifs. Not much I don't love about it. It's really cute. Really cute. Um, the one other one I really like in here and think would be cute to stitch, and who doesn't love a strawberry, but this one by, I think it's Severosa, right? Yeah, Severosa. I like her stuff. Um, I think that's really cute. And I don't think this is on a gingham check type fabric, but it looks like it, the way the picture's done. I don't know if it was taken off a screenshot. I'm not sure. Because I believe it calls for... Um, let's go look and see. Um, stitching. Oh yeah, just country, um, vintage country mocha, which, you know, has some modeling to it, but definitely not what you're seeing in this picture. But I think it would be cute on a darker gingham like that is done. I think that would be like a picnic basket look. I like it. It'd be kind of fun on the front of a basket to attach it somehow. I think that would be nice. You could have like your silverware in there for your picnics and stuff on your table. That'd be cute. The other thing I was really excited about and um, Bonna Pfeiffer I talked about it on her um, floss tube is that she was going to have the finish instructions for what she calls like the mattress finish for the Blackbird designs. Um, United We Stand, which I have bought. This is a limited pattern. Um, you cannot get it at this point. Hopefully Blackbird will release it at some point, but I knew when I saw it, I had to have it. I love Americana stuff. The Eagle is gorgeous. So I'm very excited to, I've already skimmed through um, her finishing instructions. Um, I love her ideas. She's 
fantastic. So I'm excited to really dig in and read more about it. Um, this might have to be the next thing I focus on too, because um, I really want to do this finish. I think it's a neat, fun finish to do. So those are the things out of there that I was really excited about. So I thought I would show them to you. Um, going on Americana theme, I was very excited um, that, uh, that SoCali uh, made this biggie and different sizes, but I got the biggie. I don't know which way you want to put it, but um, a for Bitsy Bob. So I love it. It's adorable. Um, the star is so cute. The colors are fantastic. So I'm excited. I think I'm going to put the red, white, and bloom in here. And that's going to have to get kitted up inside this. And it's going to have to go in my bag. So when I want to work on, I have an idea that I need one of these for all of my seasonal projects. So Kelly, if you're listening, we need to make these in seasonal, like, for every season and I'll just buy one for every season because I need to put them in my bigger bags that have all the patterns and then the one that I'm working on can go in the biggie. It's a perfect idea, right? Like I think it's so well organized. So this is one that I have bought too. So it's got, I mean, it's got multiple, multiple charts in here. Um, some of them hit it up. Um, some of them, you know, just fabric, some with cloth, some totally kitted. Um, I am crazy. So see, some of these are kitted. I think at least that much. So all of these different Americana things. Someday well, I'll try to do one and do maybe a season at a time or something. I don't know. Somebody mentioned that to me. Um, so I actually have two Americana bags, one of them for more of the smaller ones, and this one has some of the bigger ones in it. Not very many in this one. Um, again, um, from what used to be Lila May now is Violets and Verses, Verses and Violets, something like that, on Facebook. So I loved as soon as, hello, Liz Matthews put these out, I, I need to buy fabric and stuff and get these kitted out. I love them. And um, Twin Peaks Primitives, One Nation Under God. I adore this. There's a couple more that I want to get that are bigger um, projects that I would like to put in some of these bags. So um, those are my thoughts. But I just got this and I think it's adorable. I love it. As soon as I saw it on, um, I get her, e her newsletter. Um, I've also got her on Instagram and stuff, but um, this was super exciting. And when I saw it, I went on there and I think the regular was already sold out, but I wanted a biggie anyway. I like this size um, because the other patterns fit in it really good. I wouldn't mind a smaller one too, but I do like that size. So I got that. Um, I finally got my um, fabric um, from Xjude that had been ordered a while ago. I think I told you guys I ordered a yard of fabric. Well, it came in. It's a little bunny. I've already cut it up. So here's the leftovers I have, which actually is a pretty good size leftovers. I was very excited about that. Um, this has kind of a peachy tone to it. It's not strong, but it's there. So it works really well with those kind of colors. I also got 40 count um, Rocky Mountain. And I've already caught some off of this too. I had a half yard of this. Um, I had gotten 36 in this to do my birthday start, and I decided after seeing um, uh, Kindred Stitcher, she's doing the same project I'll be doing, and we'll talk about that at the end of this month because I'm going to start it in July. July is my birthday month, and uh, she was doing it on 40, and I was like, mm, I think I like it better on 40, so I ended up ordering a piece, and I'm kind of glad I ordered a big piece, and she just happened to have it. Um, already there to buy and I was able to cut out a piece that had some really nice modeling. So when you get to do that, you can really like cut that section the way you want it with the modeling. So you can see there's quite a bit of different modeling in this. So um, I am excited to start that in July. That will be my birthday start. I also got some uh, gray sand, which has quite a bit of modeling in it too, kind of a yellow, dark gray, medium gray tone. So I'm um, excited to find something to do on this. 
Um, I actually think there are some samplers that would look good with that. I know you're thinking, really? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. I really do. Especially for next year, I think um, I'm going to be doing small samplers. I know I just talked about big projects. Doing small samplers. Small. Medium small. And then she put in a 40 count of Dove, which is a really pretty, let me open this up, gray, but it has a purpley or has more of a blue. Like if you look up against this, you can see the difference in the gray. How this is more of the, the undertone, has more of a blue purple. This one is not, it's more of a yellow and it does have yellow in it, but it, you can see the difference. How much brighter this is compared to this. So even though things are both gray, depending on that undertone of where the base starts from, this is where some of my uh, art background comes in, is, is what you're looking for. So sometimes even though it's gray, you're like, but that doesn't work and somebody else did it on gray. It's because of the undertone that it was started with, the base. So that's why a gray, a gray, a gray, they can be all different and it and the threads that you put on them are going to look different so the reason I got those three and I'm going to show you the reason I got um actually one of the reasons I got little bunny and I think I'm going to be getting more I don't think this is going to be enough is I really think that um heartstring sampleries um consider lilies and her other one that goes along with it now I can't think of what it's called I think would look good on that too so I may be ordering some more of that to, to go with those. Although I kind of want something even more peachy. But um, as you guys know, I bought the Infidel Sisters books. I bought the Vicki Clayton silks. Here are the silks for Anne. They're gorgeous. I got them all on cards. Um, I put her labels here. I put the number of the, I think it's 103. No, the Soie d'Alger on here so I can match it up. I have not gotten to the symbols yet. I like to put the symbols on there. So um, probably on this side up here, I'll be drawing the symbols and I'll show you on another project where I've done that. It just makes it a lot easier. Um, she does give a great chart that um, connects them, but I cut my fabric and I think this is going to look beautiful. So, and I'm going to put, let me put this white behind it a little bit. Can you see, you can see how that's more, this, it's definitely a more of a tan brown, but it has more of a peachy undertone. So some of these colors are going to look really beautiful on there. So there's that one. And I did the same for Isabella and her colors are slightly different. They do have some colors in common which doesn't surprise me. So here are the silks. A little more blues in hers. Or is that a little bit more? And then up against here, I think that's going to be luscious. Very, very, very pretty. So that's Isabella. It's all for Isabella. And I think that color of fabric is pretty spot on for the picture anyway. So, um, if you're looking for a fabric for those, um, I would definitely recommend the, um, I'm doing it on 40 count. Um, I decided that it's such a big sampler, I didn't want to do it any smaller than 40, but I'm not so sure I wanted it to be as tedious. Um, I like 46 and I definitely enjoy it, but it, it slows me down. I can definitely stitch faster on 40 and with it being such a big sampler, I, I think speed over size for that little amount from 40 to 46 is worth it. So um, this is um, Little Bunny by X Jude. And um, I think it's a really good um, color for that. It has enough color in it that I think the lighter colors will show up enough. There are some in those, um, both those samplers that are very similar to the fabric color, but I, I think that's just the way it is, so. Anyway, those were my purchases. Not a whole lot. So um, I'm very excited. I have no plans on starting those two big samplers anytime soon, but I have them kitten and I think they're gorgeous and I would love to see them done. I keep seeing people work on them. Um, so, um, you know, someday, someday. 
All right, so let's get to the whips. So I did not work on a couple of things this past two weeks. I did not get any work done on the Helen Sampler, Jane Fittis, or Winter Rose Manor, so I won't be showing those. But the first one I want to show you is um, Though He Seems Sleeping by Lucy Beam. And this is my thread colors for that. Um, most are not, some are, some called for, she has four different lines of threads that she gives you conversions for. Not every conversion has every color. I think DMC does, but some of the others, there just wasn't a conversion to it. So um, you can pick your own, which is what I like about this. So here is where I am at. And I am kind of happy with this progress. So I brought this border down here. I finished this alphabet row and I did this whole band right there. And I am in really liking how this looks. I know my one letters, especially on camera, are not showing up. This, um, they are very shadowy, but I don't mind it. And I really think it's pretty. Um, this is a 40 count um, brown paper by Xjude Design. So I really like this neutral. Um, it's a good neutral. It doesn't seem to have a favorite on base wise. So you could put something, almost any color on it, which I think works perfect for this sampler and it doesn't look off. So even a little. Yeah, so I did make a bit of progress on that. I wasn't sure I did. So I'm kind of happy that I did make a little progress. All right, Ann Morrison. This is um, the traditional stitches. Hands Across the Sea collaboration for their 20th anniversary. I believe they are out of booklets now. I don't know that you can get this unless it's on a secondary market. I do not believe it'll be reprinted, but I can't say. But I knew when I saw it, I, the color combinations, I loved it. Um, Scottish feel, I loved everything about that. So I made a little bit of progress on it and I'm hoping that I'm gonna try to, I need to focus on this and get caught up. Um, I believe this was May, this was June, and they're gonna start down here in July. So I am very behind. I have not finished this row. I started, I finished the A and I've started almost half this band, but that is all I've gotten done. So I'm a bit behind. I am doing this on, I, I wanna say it's a 46 King Goblin, Gob, Goblin King by um, Dixie Sampler. And she is on Facebook and sells on Facebook. So you can check her out. Um, Newcastle Bouquet, which I was talking about earlier, this is one of the samplers I am subbing in once a month to kind of get some progress done, knowing I'm not gonna finish it. Um, I have been working on this border. So when I first started, I only had the outline of these five. I have Glad to say I have finally filled all of them in. I am using the called for colors. I actually put them on a ring recently. Um, so that's all done. There's only like nine colors, which is, I can't think kind of amazing. I keep saying that, but I do think it's amazing. So here is my progress. I love this border. It looks complicated, but it is so not. It's so repetitive that you can just kind of whip through it. So. When I was doing the bottom here, I basically um, did one color at a time. So I had the outline, all the brown and branches done. I just went through and did one green and did all of it across. Went back through, did the second green, went all of it across. Went through and did this light, you know, color, did all of that across, went back through. So that way it kind of, it made it go a little bit faster. So I'm almost at the top, you can see Oh, here we go. At the top, I am got one short of being halfway across, but I really kind of want to keep going on this and maybe fill in something in here just to kind of see something different. Again, you get bogged down in doing these big samplers, but it'd be kind of fun to put in some of the alphabet, maybe some of the flowers, maybe come down here and put in this bird. I don't know. But it would be fun to try and do something other than the border, but it's a magnificent piece. I'm kind of saving this 
moth till the last because I think it's like it's beautiful. I should have bought like a needle minder or something of that if it was out. But it is it is gorgeous. So anyway, that is on uh, 40 count straw by Weeks Dye Works with um, all the called for cotton threads. So because I love this pretty much as is. Um, and we're going to go on to Maria Higginson. So I have finished part one of this. This is also a um, sampler that came out through a Facebook group. And it is not for sale right now. I'm assuming Stacy will put it up for sale later. Um, they usually do like a year exclusive. I would go to the hashtag Maria Higginson. Um, the 1837 sampler. There are a few people that have finished this and it's gorgeous because I, I don't have a picture of the ex whole thing. What I'm working on is part two and part two is this and all down this, this section. Here's the actual original sampler. And then this is the reproduction part. So, I mean, it's pretty close to the reproduction. I will say the difference is, and you can see it in this, this is the original. In the original, there is some more, um, not cross stitching, but it is, you know, more freehand type stitching. So there is somebody who finished this and tried to replicate those. And it's beautiful, beautiful. Check the hashtag out. I'm pretty sure she's under the hashtag. So this was a kit. So it came with all the called for colors. It is also on straw. I have like three or four projects on straw. Maybe I like this color for samplers that are on this color. Um, it is on 36 count though. So here's the whole sampler so far. It's a beautiful border. Um, I did get a bit more done in through here and up in here, not very much. I think I came over here on the um, tree. So it's really pretty though. It's a pretty sampler. Um, but yes, if you have not um, checked out some of those hashtags on it, definitely like if there's a sampler you like, go look at the hashtag for it because so many people have probably done it and hashtagged it. And it gives you an idea for colors, for um, fabrics, you know, just all the different ranges that people have done. Um, I really do enjoy that about hashtags. Okay, so this weekend is, I think the first weekend. Is it Blackbird style weekend? I believe it is, right? Let me see here, consulting. Yes, because this is the first weekend, it is. So I pulled out um, and I had a new start. <laughs> yes, I did a new start. What Remains is Love by Blackbird Designs. This is an exclusive from Traditional Stitches also. So you have to go to them to get it. You must order it through them. No one else will have it. It is for their 20th anniversary. They're doing some special projects this year for that. So it, you can still order it and you will get it. Um, it will take time. So I know some people have not gotten there as they ordered it. I did order the full kit, so I got the pattern. And again, this is on straw. <laughs> and I got mine in a 40 count. I believe you can um, get different counts. Uh, I believe they have 36 and 40 or 35 and 40 or whatever it is. So I ended up getting um, the conversion by um, Fibers to Die For by Amy Mitten. So silk conversion, and I'm loving it. I started this yesterday for the sale. I'm gonna continue on it today too for a while. It's really, really pretty. And I'm gonna show you against those, against that, and look at those colors, gorgeous. <clears throat> so this is the progress I have made. All right there, I've gone across on the border. It's a double border. It's so delicate and, and pretty. I mean, just really, 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 really pretty. I really love the colors against there. Let's see if I can get it up close, you can see. It's just really pretty. 
nice and soft. There are some Sumerian um, stitches right here is one in there throughout the um, sampler, which are not hard to do. Great diagram. And all of the little um, berries along here are those too. Let me pull that in for you. So hopefully you can see those. Um, and her silks are wonderful to work with. If you haven't checked it out, um, Amy Mitten um, or Fibers to Die For, she has a website. I put this in my new So Much to Love bag because I thought the colors were perfect. Um, I also even got the floss ring for that. I don't know if I showed that. If you haven't seen it, they also have a floss ring. So I got that too. Um, but I have another project by her. And if you haven't checked out her website, you really should go see it. It's there. A, I, I would love to meet her. I think she would be fun to talk to in a hoot. Um, I love the way she has things categorized and organized. I love the different types of things she has. And so she has more than just cross stitch. Um, I bought this one as a kid a while ago. It's called Forgery number 15. And this is Polly Whitlock. 1840. I had seen somebody stitch this and I'm telling you this does not do it justice. The flosses are gorgeous. This is how it's kitted up. I'm not sure if I'll do it on this fabric or not. I do like the way this looks so I will probably do it on straw. That's my thought process now or something like that. Um, then I will probably swap out the um, fabric. But um, just go check her out. Amy Mitten Designs. I'll try to link her below. Um, I got some of my Zoom friends on her one, one Wednesday, I think, and we were just like, oh my gosh. Also, she doesn't always maybe have the fabric count you want. She said, just put it in the comments that you want a different fabric count because she does only do kits with her. She doesn't sell them separately. So she does the whole thing kitted up. Um, just tell her what fabric count you would like. And she said she could swap that out. I thought that was really awesome too. And I hope that's right. But that is what she had messaged back. One of my friends had contacted her and said, I really like this one, but I really would rather do it on 40. Can we, can we swap that out? And she said, sure, just put it in the notes. And I was like, awesome. Um, so that is my whip progress. Um, so now, uh, June plans. Well, I'm gonna show you. It's kind of empty. So I really need to write it in and figure out what I want to do. Like I said, I'm kind of feel like a little lull in all the big projects. So I am really loving working on something and getting it finished. So I might try to throw some things in there like that and decide which larger samplers that I really want to focus on or work on or which ones are really like something I want to do. Um, I definitely want to keep up with Anne. I really would like to, to maybe focus on her and spend more time on her and get caught back up with the Sal. That would be um, a goal of mine I think would be good. I am really enjoying the new Blackbird there. So I'm kind of, that's calling me obviously since I started it. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm not really sure, but right now that's what I'm looking for. Um, so just to kind of recap a little, I had started out with 31, I believe 31 whips. I have finished 10. So, yay! Um, I had one start and finish this year for a um, exchange. I will have another one of those. I'm not counting those in my um, progress with my whips. So I'm trying to two whips will give me one new start for the year. So I have a total of five new starts, which I'm going to basically be using those up. Um, my new year new start does not count because obviously I haven't started the year. So that's like a give me, um, to me that's a give me every year, right? Like you gotta have a new year new start. Uh, so I basically have earned five total starts. I have done four of those, so my Holland sampler was a new year, new start. I did an Easter exchange that I showed you guys, so that doesn't count. So the four new ones I started this year are Though He Seems Sleeping, Winter Rose Manor, Jesse Watson, and What Remains is Love. Um, Jesse, I haven't showed you because I'm gonna do a separate 
I'll show you on that. And obviously I'll be keeping up with that. Um, and that one's really easy to keep up with. It's not a big sampler. The sections I have it broken up into are not very big. You can probably sit down in two or three sessions and be done with that in, in the month. So not a problem. Um, so my last earn will be for July start. Um, so I did use up my one start for June. I decided I would start that Blackbird one because it's just calling to me. And, you know, as Brenda says, stitch what calls to you, stitch what you want, stitch what you love. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to figure out June that way. I think um, I just need to mix it up a little bit. I definitely like sameness to a point, but after a while, if I get in the draws and in the lulls and like over and over and over into my head to like, Rrr. okay, I got to, I got to do something. I got to mix it up. So I think this month I might mix it up and I might just be writing stuff down as I want to stitch it this month and see how that goes. I would like to make sure I touch um, multiple things. So I may be kind of making a list of like, hey, I haven't touched that. At least let's spend an hour on that today and then I can go do something else, you know, just so I can get some progress done. So I am going to kind of go through things and figure out what do I really want to work on and spend most of my time on and what maybe I give an hour here or there through the month and just make some progress on. Um, so I think that's about it. That's where I'm at. Um, this is a bit longer than I wanted it to be, but thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening to me. I really do appreciate it. Um, I've gotten to know some people and um, I've really enjoyed that. Um, it's been fun to meet new stitchers all over. And um, I hope that you will check out my special edition Jesse Watson video, which will be coming very soon. And um, have a great day. Be kind. And I will be back hopefully in a couple of weeks. I might be three weeks. That was another thing I was going to talk about. I might start doing every three weeks, just um, depending on how much stitching I get done in the summer and where we are and what's happening on those weekends. And um, with time off, it gets to be hard. So um, definitely like spending as much time with family as we can. And so that definitely cuts into A, stitching time and B, time to film because you see this you know, 40 to 50 minutes, and it probably takes me all day off and on to make sure it gets uploaded and all the things happen. So I appreciate you guys, and I will see you soon. Just be kind. Bye, guys. Hey, everyone. I'm back because I forgot to tell you who the winner was for the, um, the beautiful giveaway that I had from Number 12 Stitch Co. online. So you need to go check out her shop, which I'm linking below. And I can't believe I totally forgot. I had it laid out here, didn't do it. So here is the floss ring that I'm giving away. And I have Cara Ponder right there. So Cara, please, um, in the link below, you'll see my email address. Just email me your address and I will get that out to you. So it's Cara, K-A-R-A, -A, Ponder, P-O-N-D-E-R. And um, maybe Cara, K-A-R-A. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. But anyway, contact me and I will get you your floss ring. Congratulations. I'm so excited for you. And I am really, really thankful to um, Nicola for sending those to me and um, that I could pass them on to you guys. I think they're fabulous. I love them. And um, I've added them to a couple of my um, projects. I have one more, the other one, I've added one already, but I need to add the other second one to my project. So you will be getting this. And that's it, guys. Sorry about that. And have a great next few weeks. Bye. And again, be kind.